Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when I feel like at a clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And today, we are answering a letter. Yes, we have letters. If you want to send letters, please do. Uh, Guido, he goes down to the mail room uh, every morning, and he goes down there and he grabs a sack of letters, and he comes up the stairs like that. That's how he does it. It's cute, actually. He comes up the stairs, and then he brings it up, and he's like, oh. he's like that. And I go, like, why didn't you take the elevator? And he's like, oh, I forgot again. Anyways, then he pours it all over the letter table. He pours it, and then Hernandez, Melissa, the Perlo, the Perlocopter drivers, and uh, Helen, who grinds up the pearls. By the way, have you seen the pearls? Here, here's some pearls for you into your land. Just, wow. There you go. Those are pearls. They bring uh, peace and love to the world. So there you go. Anyways, she's the pearl grinder. We all do a pearlo dance. People haven't seen this. Pearlo dance, pearlo dance, pearlo dance, like that. And we dance around. And then we read the letters, and then we pick a letter, because that they because they asked me for uh, some cool things. So we got a letter here for Murich. No, not Murich. That was last week. Where is the other one? Oh, Samantha Spelt from Peak Point, Illinois. Asking, uh, you always are so saying, she says in the video, I love or her letter, that I really like the, how positive you are. So I would like you to do the opposite of that and tell me who your worst, least favorite players are from each team. And we thought about it, and I was like, that's going to be very difficult. Because she's right, I don't like to say bad things about people. But I'm going to today. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm doing my least favorite players from every team. Uh, by the way, go to, if you like the gambling, go to BPAL Picks. It's a new channel I just did. and I'm giving free NFL picks. I, I don't just do hockey. I also do NFL uh, for picks and stuff like that. Uh, hockey season's going to be started. And over on my Patreon, the... Uh, um, all, it's all free picks on my Patreon right now. So I'll send, I'll leave, I'll put the link to that on the bottom. It's completely free. Just go check it out. Pick a, pick a desired uh, package or whatever, and I'll reimburse you right away. And then uh, we're going to be changing the packages around. So, uh, but you can go do that. And uh, so, the, and then there's the Steel Flyers, www.steelflyers website. I'll tell you more at the end of this video. But let's get into it. My least liked players from every team. Tell me who your least liked players are from every team. Let's get that comment section a roll in. Let's connect. Connect with each other, boys and girls. That would be fun. Sure would. Okay. Let's go. Anaheim Ducks. So I had to think about this one for a while. My least liked player. And it was tough because there's not many least liked players for me on here. But eventually, I had to go with Sonny Milano. And the reason why is Sonny Milano was 16th overall in 2014. He's been around a long time. He played under Tortorella in Columbus, who was probably one of the, maybe the best coach of all time. And uh, I was like, you got to be good by now. He just, he has all the talent in the world, but he doesn't have the drive. He's been called lazy. Tortorella, I've seen Tortorella like just shake his head. He, he doesn't want to play defense a lot. He's, you don't know where his head is half the time. And I hope it all changes here in Anaheim because I actually like the pickup when Anaheim did it because if you can get this guy to get his head straight, he's got great amount of talent. He, he didn't do too bad in Anaheim in the 11 games he was there. So we'll see what happens. But I had to pick one. So that's the one I picked. Now let's go to our next one. We got to go to 
Vegas Golden Knights. Vegas Golden Knights had a tough one picking this. I had to pick somebody that isn't even on their major roster right now. Let's go to their depth chart because I like everybody on here. Like there are some of my favorites here. Mark Stone and uh, Riley Smith and Che Theodore. Like what's not to like here? Zach Whitecloud, awesome guy who worked his way up. So that was a difficult one to pick, but then I found one down here. This guy right here, Thomas Jerko. He's even got the name. I think it's Jerko, actually. <laughs> He's not a jerk. I don't know anything about this guy personally. But I do know he played in Edmonton and uh, played for like 12 games. Guy has speed to burn, almost like Milano. He's just freaking annoying. It's like, dude, you got talent, but where are you going? He's all over the ice. He doesn't know where he needs to be in the defensive zone and quite often in the offensive zone. If he happens to find his way towards the net, he can shoot. And if he, can, if he goes to the net at the time when you need to go to the net, not when you're supposed to be go, skating back into the defensive zone, he can cause some havoc in the offensive zone, but he never seems to find a way to. He didn't for the long time. They tried him in Chicago. As you can see, he was in Detroit. Detroit even gave him 44 games. Because if you see him in practice, you're like, why is this guy not lighting it up? You tell him over and over and over and over and over again how to play the game in the NHL level, and it just doesn't get it. So none of this is, this isn't personal, but I just, it was very frustrating to watch him. So that's why he's my least favorite player on Vegas. Now we go to the Washington Capitals. And uh, this is sort of a similar thing. And this is not this fellow's fault. It's Nick Jensen. Uh, he's just a bad defenseman. It was a bad signing. I never really got why what they figured they were getting in uh, Nick Jensen when they signed him out of Detroit. Detroit played him a lot of minutes because they had to. They had nobody else to put there. He's not overly uh, he's not overly physical. He's biggish, but he doesn't really play his body all that well. He doesn't play well offensively. He's a very vanilla defenseman, and good for him. He got two and a half million for a lot of years. He was probably going really, yeah. <laughs> I'll take that. Now he's falling down the lineup like crazy. Bringing in Trevor Van Riemsdyk, Jogan C Jogas. Jonas Siegenthaler is probably ready, and Nick Jensen's probably going to ride the pine for two and a half million for quite a long time now. So uh, that would be my least favorite. Now we got an now we get to some really interesting ones here. Um, the Toronto Maple Leafs. I honestly, a lot of people are probably going to say Nylander because he held out and all that. I don't bemoan anybody for holding out for money or whatever the case may be. It's a business transaction. You do what you do. That's fine with me. I don't really dislike anybody on... Okay, I was going to say Travis Dermott for a lot of the reasons that I said for Jensen. Because he is just... As far as I'm concerned, he's not really an NHL defenseman. He shouldn't be in your 5'6". He's been very fortunate to play a lot of minutes. That's why he's only getting... You know, eight eight point seven. With all the minutes he's played, they're still only giving him under a million a year, because he's really not that good, and he shouldn't be playing that high. But I had to go with Austin Matthews, and it's not because I don't like him as a person. Just shave the stash, dude. Okay, just just please stay shave the stash. It, it looks. <laughs> It's really like, please, so cheesy. My gosh, why would you do that on purpose? Okay, Austin, I know you're listening, Mr. Watson, or Mr. Matthews. I know you're listening. And uh, so now you've heard it from Perlo. So you'll probably see that Austin Matthews has shaved the stash for the beginning of the season. Once it gets out there, the Perlo wisdom is uh, offering up his pearls for him to do so that's the only reason that's the only player that I really am not a fan of simply for that reason that's all I could find 
for Toronto. So let's go to even more interesting, St. Louis Blues. Okay, this one was a little difficult and it's not really anybody's fault, but Jordan, Jordan Bennington, uh, you're 27 years old. The reason why it took so long for Jordan Bennington to get into the NHL was attitude. His attitude was arrogant towards his players. This is what I've uh, been, what's been said by uh, in several places, and they wanted to bring him up, but they were just waiting for him to grow up. Uh, now Jake Allen leaves Montreal and starts making comments to the effect of, well, it's going to be nice to work for a professional like Price. Ouch. Jordan, you're going to be good, dude. Just He's a very arrogant kid. Everybody says that. They call it, he's confident in himself. But you see the arrogance in him. Had a bad year last year. Quite often what happens with people that are arrogant like that, it's if when, they, when things go bad, they go real bad. And I hope, my friend, that it humbles you. You grow up because at, you're 27 years old and you've got an opportunity to be one of the best. It's not that I, none, none of these things is like I hate anybody or whatever the case may be, but I got to pick one of my least liked players on a team. No, it would be very uncomfortable to go into a room and see this arrogant kid that hasn't did anything yet every day. Grow up, dude. Okay? All right. Uh, now we go to... Uh, Vancouver Canucks, and this is so, so, this was an easy one. I didn't even have to think about this. Let's go to the depth chart. I think everybody there would agree. It's this fellow, and what are you doing putting him on the right side in your top six? Louis Erickson's riding the pine. <sighs> Louis Erickson, $6 million a year, and he hasn't played worth the darn. Hasn't gone into a corner. Doesn't want to go in front of the net for at least two years now on that contract. And here is the thing. You know what? You get older. It's not his fault that he got a good contract. Good for him. I don't bemoan him for that. But people come uh, started going up to him this year and asking him, are you going to retire? Now, if you're an NHL player and you have media and people asking you if you're going to retire, there's a reason for that. Two reasons, actually. You're not good enough really to be in the league and everybody sees it, for one. And everybody's hoping you retire because your cap hit's killing everybody. You know how awkward it would be to go in that room? It should be awkward to go in that room at $6 million a year with the production that he has given on that contract. Uh, it has been absolutely brutal. Last year, he got, let's go down, 13 points in 49 games. And he was getting some prime ice time, a lot of that. 29 points in 81 games the year before. Absolutely pathetic numbers. And a guy doesn't He's, he used to be one of the best defense, defensive forwards in the league. Um, and now he's oblivious because his answer was, when they asked him if he was going to retire, he said, no, I think I still have more to give. And the room went quiet because you haven't given anything for two years. You've been holding out. You have more somewhere when there hasn't been any? What the heck kind of an answer is that? The only thing we want to hear from people that are playing like that is, I got to be better. I'm not happy with myself. You never hear this from Erickson at all. He thinks he's okay. He walks into a room and everybody goes, Erickson, go home, okay? Just don't come in the room unless you're going to be upset with yourself. Anyways. He's one of my least favorite players in the league. And so that was a pretty easy one. And now we're going to go to Arizona. And I'm going to do all of them, but I'm only doing it in small chunks because that's all. We just can only take small chunks of Perlo pearls, right? Because otherwise we'll just explode with joy. 
And we don't want that. <laughs> we don't want, you can only take so much of the Perlo Frolic at one time. This is also an easy one, and I'm sure that you'll all be able to figure out which one it'll be. Arizona, it's Phil Kessel, everybody. Phil Kessel of the $8 million a year. And again, I don't bemoan anybody that has a good contract. Good for you. Make all the money you can, whatever the case may be. But this is a guy who was in Toronto and was well-renowned and talked about, now could have been rumors, about not being what you call a fitness freak by any stretch. There's been talk about him going fishing all summer and never seeing the ice, not exercising whatsoever. And he was the captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs, if you can believe that. Now, it's amazing what he did with that. I mean, and it's your life. Do whatever you want. He was amazing. He was a 40-goal scorer. This is a guy that never exercised, and he looked like it. Like, if you saw him when he was doing interviews, the guy looked like he, some dude you just saw down the street. Then he went to Pittsburgh, had it out. Like, I don't know, he seemed to be yelling at Malkin on the ice all the time. And Anyways, they, he, the people, they got pretty much fed up with him there, it seems. They got fed up with him, and they send him off. To Arizona, what a terrible move by Arizona. I don't know what the heck Sheka is thinking on a lot of the things he did. But here's the one that got me the most. He has a terrible year in Arizona. He's 33 years old. Apparently conditioning has not been high on the Phil Kessel's list of things to do. And he has, I think, like maybe 30 points, 14 goals and 38 points, make it $8 million a year. And he says, it's the most banged up I've been all year. That's what he said in the media. He said it was the most banged up I've been all year. You figure? If you have been a poor condition athlete the whole time you've been an athlete, it's pretty likely at 33, those bangs are going to feel a lot worse. You didn't take care of yourself at $8 million a year. And that... I don't like, and I don't like anybody in the room. I don't think anybody in the room enjoys hearing you complain about being banged up when you look completely out of shape and you're making a crap load of money and don't seem to care. That's the perception. And um, he's been fairly snarly in the media and he just sounds like he's whining a lot. And I can just imagine that in a room. So I had to pick my least favorite of these teams, and I'm going to do the rest. But right now, those are my least favorite of the teams I've chosen up until now. I basically was just doing it from uh, from uh, Cap Friendly's uh, Cap Space list. We got down to Anaheim. Next time, I'm going to start at Winnipeg and move my way down. That's my full 42%, boys and girls. Highly recommend SteelFlyers.com, www.SteelFlyers.com. It's starting up now. Uh, John from Off the Wall Hockey is on board. We have um, Flyers Nitty Gritty on board. We have OMB Podcasts on board. We got people just clamoring to get on board here. And there's going to be a live feed. It's not just going to be NHL, boys and girls. No, no, no. It's going to be NFL, baseball, basketball, NBA, uh, MLB. And every, every team is going to be covered by writers, podcasters, uh, YouTubers, and a live feed will go through the whole thing all, all the time. They'll have primetime news reporting and on every single team all the time. It's going to be absolutely amazing. I'm proud to be part of it, and I hope you will. I know you will all enjoy it. Thanks for listening. You guys are all awesome. Uh, tell me about what your least favorite players are on the teams that I did today. And I'll talk to you about it in the comment section because I love doing that because I love all of you. Have a great day. Lots of love to you.